they're not to be quieted. They've already suffered decades of being silenced. Hello, amigos. Today we have a pretty serious topic, which is the topic of Korean comfort women. If you spend any amount of time living in Korea, or if you've read about Korea, you've probably run across this euphemism of comfort women. The term comfort women is used to describe women who were forced to be sex slaves by the Japanese Imperial Army during World War II. This topic of comfort women has caused a great amount of friction between the two powers of Korea and Japan ever since then. But that's enough for me. Let's listen to Hannah, who is one of my most talented former students here in Korea, and she's someone who knows a great deal about this topic. Basically, I started taking interest in the topic when I was in middle school because I've always been really big on human rights and it's a very relevant issue in Korea as it was for the past, um, I'd say, three decades since this story started coming to light in the 90s. And uh, after taking an interest in this topic, an upperclassman named Iju, she actually introduced me to a museum called the War and Women's Human Rights Museum, located in Hongdae, which is in Seoul. And there I started volunteering as a docent, meaning that I guided visitors at the museum. Most of the victims came from Korea, which was a Japanese colony at the time. 80 to 90% is one of the estimates. And the comfort women victims included girls as young as 12 years old who were often kidnapped and they were trapped to work in these brothels that they called comfort stations, where they could be raped by more than 30 men in a single night. I think sincerity is just the number one thing when it comes to apology from Japan's part. Um, I feel as if the apology should be incomplete and in full. Um, I don't really know why there should be any mention from the Japanese government as they have in the past talking of some sort of benefits or profits that these former comfort women might have gotten because in the end, most of them, all they had was gotten out of their time at in comfort stations was trauma and pain and their childhood teenage years or younger years just essentially getting stolen away from them um furthermore we see in um, examples like in germany where all of the citizens are extremely well educated on what happened in the holocaust but if you look at interviews from the Japanese public, there's a lot of YouTube videos where people just go around in the streets of Japan asking about how much education they received on the comfort women and victims in general from Korean victims in general from um, Japanese colonization. Not to say that comfort women were exclusively Koreans, but it's estimated that like 80% of the comfort women were in fact from Korea. Uh, it seems as if the Japanese public is not very well informed about this topic. And working at the museum, I heard very similar stories from um, Japanese tourists who of, often frequent the museum. And they tell me that in schools and textbooks, the comfort woman is not more than a page of their history, despite the massive amount of pain that they've caused the victims compared to the importance that is there for them to learn from this mistake and move forward. And that's not possible with education. And many com former comfort women in the past have discussed that one of their main goals when it comes to moving forward and creating more solutions when it comes to preventing wartime sexual violence is that they wish for the public to be educated, which is why they're asking that we increase educational facilities, not only in Japan, but in Korea as well. Um, beyond sincerity, I think there also needs to be an effort from the Korean government to include the comfort women, because in the end, the people who have suffered were the victims themselves. So they can't not be a part of any agreement or treaty or apology or whatever that occurs between Korea and Japan. But the reason why um, many Koreans and the court believe that 
another apology needs to occur is because back in 2015, the victims were not part of the conversation at all. It was just a conversation between the governments. And the pain didn't happen to the government. The trauma didn't happen to the government. So it's actually a bit outrageous if you think about it, the fact that they weren't included in the conversation. So I think a really important aspect of an apology is, were the victims involved? Were the victims involved in reaching this agreement? Because who else is there, is there to apologize to other than the victims and the victims' families themselves? They're the ones who suffered. So I think that's what's really coming to light these days. Uh, when it comes to the Korean media and what's being discussed about the comfort women, it's including the women themselves in this important conversation between governments. Like they're not to be quieted. They've already suffered decades of being silenced by uh, both the Korean society that told them that their experience in the brothels were extremely shameful and the Japanese government who tried to hide this up. That's why even though this tragedy occurred back in the war, it didn't come to light until the 90s because the women were told that their experiences being sex slaves was, was extremely shameful because of um, Korea's very conservative values regarding sex, which is why um, the victims didn't start coming forward until the 90s, which by then they were already very old, elderly women. So right now, uh, one by one, the victims are unfortunately passing away. And I guess a key thing when it comes to apology from Japan is the urgency. They deserve to have a proper apology before they die and we want them to be a part of it. I just wish more people knew about the topic because it's not only a singular incident of um, sexual violence, classism, and much more because it's all interrelated. Um, these are obviously women, so they were told to stay quiet, which is why they couldn't testify until the 90s. Um, and that much courage was required for them to testify even then. It was a classism issue because a lot of the women were from very poor families that were so poor that they were forced to send their daughters off. A lot of the time they thought that they were getting, um, going to these foreign lands to work in factories instead of brothels, but that wasn't the case. And the fact that they were such lower class women meant that even when they came back, there was no one willing to lend an ear to them and ask them what really happened because they just didn't have that privilege to have a voice. And this was before the big democratic movement in the 80s for Korea. So back then, women, especially lower class women, they didn't have a proper voice or an outlet really to express um, their griefs which is a really, really sad factor about the comfort women's story. Um, furthermore, it highlights the tragedy of war and how it really puts people in dire circumstances. You see many uh, former Japanese soldiers cry, cry about the comfort women incident and express their deep apologies and talk about how the interconnect interconnected of their own trauma was very difficult for them psychologically that they just didn't have the empathy to spare. So yeah, in conclusion, I think more people should know about the comfortment issue, not only because it's an important part of history, but it's an issue related to sexism, classism, and war that can easily be repeated in the future.